welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at issues behind the news. With the comment period open on an important amendment to South Africa's Electricity Regulation Act, there are increasing calls for the reform to be shaped in a way that truly unlocks new private capacity. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss some of the issues being raised. Hi, Terence. Morning, Chanel. Much focus has been given to the license exemption threshold. Yes, since the State of the Nation address earlier this year by President Cyril Ramaphosa, where he said that the license exemption threshold would be looked at by Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Gwedi Mantash and raised in a, in a bid to open up what was described as self-generation, but it was also known as embedded or distributed generation, that market and get investment going in there, there's been a lot of attention on the threshold. Currently, it's a paltry one megawatt. So anything above one megawatt has to go through a rigorous uh, and laborious licensing process with the National Energy Regulator. Anything below that sub one megawatt can be simply registered, which is also not the easiest uh, and most streamlined process yet. And that's why a lot of the embedded generation plants in South Africa have basically just flown under the radar. So we don't actually have a very good visibility of what our embedded and distributed generation stock is. But we know that this market could be a lot larger and, the, and it could help alleviate the current load shedding pressures that we have on the system. So the, 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 the one uh, threshold that was mentioned and was researched by Meridian Economics was to suggest to raise it up to 50 megawatts, which is large. Uh, and that there was a view that that could unlock about 5,000 megawatts of new uh, distributed or embedded generation capacity in, in over a five year period, which would basically close the gap that we currently have prevailing in the system of about 5,000 megawatts. That's what Eskim estimates that it would be. And it would do it quickly and cheaply. However, last month, uh, Mantash, the minister said that he felt that the threshold should be raised to only 10 megawatts and published a uh, subsequently a draft amendment to the legislation, which is now out for public comment. It's been out since the 23rd of April, and there's a 30 day comment period. There are other reforms that are seen to be potentially important to unlock investment. Yes, I think the threshold has been captured much of the headlines and the attention, but the uh, schedule two of the Electricity Regulation Act has other limitations within it, which uh, sort of are uh, limiting or constraining the ability of companies to invest in this uh, space. And I think the key, there's a lot of uncertainty around wheeling, the cost of wheeling, getting wheeling contracts from either a municipal distributor or uh, Eskim and how that should be priced. But more importantly, uh, people that want to invest in these plants, at the moment, you can either only consume it inside your fence 100%, or if you wheel it over the network, it has to be to a related party. So if you're a mining company, one of your subsidiaries, for instance, can take that electricity. It, it isn't a, uh, an open market where you can sell that electricity because you've got surplus into the grid and that you can contract with multiple players. So a sort of many to many market is what would probably unlock this much more uh, assertively than would be just a change in the threshold. So that, that will unlock economies of scale, because if you don't have that, then generally people are going to invest in smaller capacity, or they're going to start investing in smaller capacity that's not grid tied, and uh, for instance, invest in, in uh, storage instead, which is really not the least cost solution. The grid, the grid and access to the grid and to those assets are what will be uh, uh, unlocking a least cost solution for South Africa. So this would be an expensive way of, uh, of self-supply rather than a way that we can share the infrastructure, share the costs, and also share the benefits in the form of lower tariffs. So I think beyond the, the 10 or 50 megawatt threshold, whatever that's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of attention in the comments uh, to the, the issue of wheeling and especially um, wheeling to unrelated or non-related parties. What effect do you think these comments will have? Well, I think that DMRE is very much in implementation mode, and they see this as another uh, instruction to tick the box and get it out the way, as we've seen with a number of developments. And it will be interesting to see because when uh, there was a similar comment period for the municipal, liberalizing the municipal procurement, 
uh, market so that municipalities could either procure or build their own capacity. It was also a very a sort of limited uh, reform that was implemented. And in this case, all we've seen is the uh, change that has been implemented really uh, is that we've just changed the one megawatt to we've added a zero and made it 10 megawatts. The other reforms that would really unlock this market, as we've seen in other countries such as Australia, in Vietnam last year, I think there was something like 7,000 megawatts of capacity, rooftop and embedded and distributed capacity added in, in a single year. So you can see how quickly this can, can, uh, can blossom if you have the regulatory space to do it in. Uh, and uh, so it depends you now as to how these comments are received, what these comments contain, and whether uh, the minister and his department decides to, to embed some of these additional reforms or just sticks with adding the zero to behind the one in terms of the, the, the threshold for a license exemption. So it's, it's too early to say, it's premature to say, I think we need to let the common period run its course. But I think there is growing uh, anxiety that uh, we need to deal with this shortfall that we have in the electricity system. This is the cheapest and quickest way of dealing it with, with it. It has no recourse to the fiscal resources, which we know are extremely strained. So it, it really comes off private balance sheets. There seems to be an investor appetite we saw at last, for instance, Goldfields this week getting going on, they got its, their license approval for 40 megawatts at the South Deep Mine. That took a number of years. I know that the license was only submitted uh, to NERSA officially last year, but it really took about three years to get across the line. We can't really afford those sort of delays. So we need a, a reform in the space and we need a reform that really deals with the problem. And the problem is that we're short of energy and this is a, uh, and we also have rising tariffs, and this is a way to help uh, inject new energy into the system without recourse to either the ESKIM or the national balance sheet. And it can be done with the correct uh, framework in a way that also starts to put a cap on these ever rising tariffs in South Africa. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.